Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in Papua New Guinea where he addressed the Forum of India-Pacific Islands Cooperation Summit. He also held bilateral talks with the Prime Minister James Marape today. The Indian Prime Minister arrived in the country on Sunday after attending the G7 summit in Hiroshima. Now this is the first time that an Indian Prime Minister is visiting Papua New Guinea. India and the United States are actively seeking to counter Beijing's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Papua New Guinea will sign a defense pact with the United States. The defense cooperation agreement will give the U.S. troops access to the Pacific nation's ports and the airports. Now, the Pacific Island nation is strategically located close to the trade routes to Australia and Japan. Washington and New Delhi are concerned that Beijing is trying to woo these tiny nations with diplomatic and financial incentives. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will be holding separate talks with 14 Pacific leaders, including New Zealand Prime Minister Chris Hipkins. Now, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi landed in the nation's capital on Sunday night. Modi was met by a gun salute, traditional dancers as well. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister even extended his hand to touch Prime Minister Narendra Modi's feet. Now, in Indian tradition, the gesture is meant to show respect to the elders and receiving their blessings. As per the reports, China has been pouring money into these countries in the Pacific. This has alarmed New Delhi and its allies in the Quad. New Delhi is increasing its engagement with Pacific Islands. This is due to this strategic location and fears that China could dominate the region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the, th the third summit of the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation, or FIPEC, which is currently underway. Both the summit and the bilateral talks have been scheduled between the participating countries. आपकी तरह हम मल्टीलेटरलिज्म में विश्वास रखते हैं, फ्री, ओपन और इंक्लूसिव इंडोपैसिफिक का समर्थन करते हैं, सभी देशों की संप्रभुता और अखंडता को सम्मान करते हैं, ग्लोबल साउथ की आवाज भी यूएन सुरक्षा परिषद में बुलंदी से उठनी चाहिए इसके लिए अंतरराष्ट्रीय संस्थाओं का सुधार हमारी साझा प्राथमिकता होनी चाहिए नाउ आफ्टर द समिट इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल इंटरैक्ट विद स्कॉलर्स फ्रॉम द इंडियन टेक्निकल एंड इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन प्रोग्राम दैट इज बिफोर डिपार्टिंग फॉर सिडनी वेयर ही इज शेड्यूल्ड टू स्पेंड द नेक्स्ट 2 डेज Ahead of Prime Minister Modi's visit, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said that Australia and India share a commitment to a stable, secure and a prosperous Indo-Pacific. Together, we have an important role to play in supporting this vision. This is the first time that an Indian Prime Minister is visiting Australia since 2014. Prime Minister Modi will hold bilateral talks and meet Australian business leaders as well. He will return to India on Wednesday night. For more on this, we are now being joined by Principal Diplomatic Correspondent Siddhant Sibyl. He's joining us live from Sydney. A very good morning to you, Siddhant. Now, this is the first time that an Indian Prime Minister has visit, visited Papua New Guinea. How do you assess uh, New Delhi's outreach towards the Pacific Islands, especially with China's growing ambitions in the region? Well, when it comes to the Pacific, it has emerged as an important uh, geographical area in the wider Indo-Pacific vision that is backed by India, Japan, Australia, United States. Now, it has also seen increased geopolitical contestation with China playing its role in increasing trade. It even signed a security pact last year with Solomon, Solomon Islands that uh, raised eyebrows. Uh, but essentially, when it comes to India's role, India has two-pronged strategy. One, of course, uh, a strong diaspora connect, especially with countries like Fiji, where, is, uh, where there is a huge uh, number of uh, the Indian diaspora members present. And second, of course, is under uh, the rubric of the Indo-Pacific vision, India has been helping build capacity and uh, helping in 
climate change activities infrastructure with these pacific countries now we saw the indian prime minister's address at the pacific meet and one key message he sent out was that india wants to be the voice of the global south and india will put their aspiration the aspiration of pacific countries in front of the world why is g20 presidency Absolutely, Siddharth. Now, just yesterday as well, U.S. President Joe Biden acknowledged India's role in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, Prime Minister Modi will later be departing for Sydney in uh, this leg of his three-nation tour. What will dominate the talks in Sydney? And at a large, how is Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's global outreach being seen at the moment? Well, uh specifically when it comes to uh, the sydney visit there are two key focus areas first of course is uh, strong cooperation with australia there has been uh, in the past a number of focus areas like trade just last year india and australia signed the ecta pact and uh, there is now focus on a wider free trade agreement uh, focus also on defense and security the second aspect is the diaspora angle we know that the indian prime minister is going to address a mega diaspora event here in uh, sydney and there is a huge number of of uh, uh, members of the indian diaspora in fact since the time we have been here in past few hours we have seen a lot of members of the indian diaspora some of them have also spoken to us uh, but essentially when it comes to indian prime minister's global outlook uh, the three country visit which is japan papua new guinea and then of course australia will help further india's agenda on the high table and also focus on india's perspective whether it's uh, being the voice of the global south whether it's climate change or whether it's the vision uh, India supports on the Indo-Pacific. Right, Sudan. So apart from uh, economic cooperation at the moment, also talk to us about Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's growing popularity. Apparently, yesterday, Australian Prime Minister Al Albanese said that he is facing a torrent of requests from prominent people wanting to attend the events where Prime Minister Modi would be speaking. Tell us more on that. Well, a similar kind of challenge even uh, the U.S. President Biden also talked about. Remember, the Indian Prime Minister travels to U.S. next month and there will be a state dinner in, in his honor. And uh, The U.S. President said that he is getting a, a deluge of, uh, of requests to attend that state dinner. But specifically talking about uh, uh, the diaspora event, uh, 20,000 Indian uh, Indian Australians and Indians are expected to attend the event which will take place tomorrow here in Sydney and uh, as you pointed out uh, the, when the informal conversation was taking place on the sidelines of the Quad meeting uh, that took place over the weekend both the Australian Prime Minister and the uh, American President talked about this uh, this this particular challenge they are facing. In fact, the U.S. President went uh, ahead by saying that I would like to have your autograph uh, uh, that points to his popularity, not only uh, in the region, but across the world. In fact, uh, uh, we saw how the Indian Prime Minister was welcomed in uh, Papua New Guinea with uh, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea uh, trying to touch his feet in that traditional Indian way. So uh, there is uh, a popularity for the Indian Prime Minister globally, especially among the world leaders, but also so reflective of uh, what is viewed about India globally. Absolutely, Sadan. We'll of course be tracking the, the summit in Sydney later today. But thank you so much for joining us in Beyond and sharing your insights with us. Thanks very much.